outside the window of um, the Millennium Falcon is this uh, hill, this rock that sticks up out in the desert. And it's just been of real interest to me since I've I moved. Uh, I originally, I was parked further out into the valley, about uh, two miles from here. And uh, I moved up further up closer to the Kofa Mountains. So I'm uh, real close to the Kofa Mountains right now. Uh, and uh, to the Palm Canyon entrance. Um, which is just right there. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I've been uh, really interested in that, uh, that hill back there and uh, just thought that it would be fun to climb it. And then uh, in the desert in between that hill and the mountain and right up next to the mountain also interests me. So I'm going for a little hike and include that in it. Right outside the Millennium Falcon, there is a pathway that goes right out into the desert. And I'm hoping there aren't too many choya pods with thorns all over them out here. Uh, so that I don't get them in my shoes. <laughs> Interesting pathway goes through some washes, goes past some beautiful desert flora, look at this beautiful Ocotillo right here, isn't that gorgeous? This is, this just has to be an absolutely gorgeous place to be when the desert is all in bloom with all of the ocotillo and and the uh, choya the red and the yellow uh and whatever other colors there might be uh it just has to be an unbelievable sight look at those nasty choya thorns oh my goodness yeah that's what bandit has been getting in his paws that's what I had in my shoes the other day. Those thorns are long and they have barbs. They're like a fish hook. And I don't know, the point of them are almost microscopic because they just touch you and they stick. <laughs> and look at this perfect saguaro cactus. It's about 10 feet tall. I'm not certain on average how tall they get for each year they they live. But I have been told that the reason that they grow these extra arms is because the cactus senses somehow that it is off balance a bit and it begins to grow this extra arm to add some weight on the side that it's needed to balance it out a little bit more. Don't know for certain if that's true, but that's what I've heard. Here's this hill that uh, I've been looking at from the Millennium Falcon. The rock wall that goes up and uh, goes up pretty high. Well, it's, you know, not a mountain, but uh, I'm guessing it might be 40, maybe 50 feet high. Let's uh, see if we can find a way up. Yes, sir, that is uh, that's straight down right there. What a rugged, uh, jaggy outcrop. There you can see the Millennium Falcon in the distance. Turns out this uh, 
little hill was a little taller than I thought, maybe closer to 100 feet. And as I spin and do a little bit of a 180 here, or maybe not quite <laughs> that much, you can see the entrance to Palm Canyon and the parking lot, and maybe you can see the little dots of the cars that are there. There's probably six or eight of them. And you can see the, uh, the desert that I plan to uh, hike out through in just a few minutes. But isn't this a wonderful view along the mountain wall of the Kofa Mountains and out across the desert of the La Paz Valley. This is looking north towards Quartzsite and uh, it's where the Rock and Gem Show is. Uh, just north of Quartzsite this year is the uh, RTR. That's the Bob Wells Rubber Tramp Rendezvous. And they're up at the La Paz County Fairgrounds this year. Uh, I hope you're seeing this. It's hard for me to tell because of the glare on the screen that I'm looking at. But I think that's uh, the road coming in from the highway. And around we go out there uh, across the La Paz Desert Valley. Uh, last night and this morning, both times I was out taking Bandit for a walk. And boy, you could just hear the coyotes out there. Just a yip, 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 yipping. I mean, a lot of them. <laughs> they were having a good old time. <laughs> but I still haven't seen any. Haven't run into any. Haven't seen any of those invisible bighorn sheep either. <laughs> All right, that's it for the 360. Yabba dabba doo! <laughs> it's always easier going up than it is going down. <laughs> but here's my plan. I'm planning on following alongside this ridge right here, the top of this rock up thrust and uh, right down towards the end of it there because it gets lower and I'm hoping that it'll take me right down to the desert. If it doesn't then I can I'll be lower and I can always kind of slide down through the rocks right there. We'll see. <laughs> well, that's looking back up that ridge that I just walked down and uh, I'm down at the other end, and there's no reasonable way down. And yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not climbing that. So my plan is to kind of slide down here, and we'll see how well that goes. <laughs> slow, slow, slow. I'll uh, leave the camera on and take you with me this time. So if I fall and die, somebody might know where to come and look for me. <laughs> well, I guess not, because this video would never post. <laughs> oh, my word. Slow, 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 slow. Well, there's another barrel cactus growing out here. I know a whole lot of people that would love to have that thing growing in their yard. <laughs> but, sorry, it's growing in my yard. <laughs> oh, anybody know what that is? <laughs> That's a prickly pear. The only reason why I'm so excited is because it's the first one that I've seen out here in this desert in four or five days that I've been here. It's amazing. I thought there'd be more prickly pear. I guess it's not quite the right habitat for it. Well, this is the uh, the end of that uh, 
ridge that I was up on top of climbing on and this is what I would have had to have climbed down if I hadn't a slid down in that gravelly, more gravelly spot. I just didn't want to do that. Well, some of you watching this video right now might be new to the Papa and Bandit channel. You might think after only watching the last few videos, oh, that Papa, he's just a, he's just an old fart. He just likes to walk the easy trails and he doesn't do any real hiking. Well, let me tell you something. Here I am out in the desert with no trail, just walking across it. And I come across this wash right here. Very, very intriguing. It's got a, uh, it's got a gully right here that's probably 30 feet deep and a pocket. But when it's raining, I'm certain probably captures a lot of water that the animals will come and drink out of. Look at that mesquite tree right there. Yeah, you know that, that that thing is sending down roots. It's finding water. Yeah, that's pretty special. See that little messenger from hell right there? <laughs> that little Choya pod? <laughs> I was walking along being as careful as I could, and it just jumped out <laughs> and attached itself to my boot. <laughs> So, okay, I've seen a few more prickly pear out here now. This is probably the fifth or sixth one I've seen. And I've seen them mostly uh, right alongside the washes where there's a little more moisture. So I'm guessing that they need a little bit more moisture to grow well. Well, that's where I'm trying to get to. Is that... Uh... In that shadow right there is a, a gash in the rock. I'd kind of like to be able to see what's up in there. But I'm still, oh, uh, maybe a half a mile away from that mountain wall. And I've run into a wash that's really deep, maybe 50 feet and uh, steep sides it's going to be really hard for me to get down i gotta go find a way around this well there we got some coyote scat and right next to it we got some big horn sheep scat so maybe Maybe I'll be blessed and maybe I will see some something wild out here other than flora. Maybe I will see some animals. Getting up close to the mountain now, a couple hundred yards away. And uh, let's see if the mountain likes me. Yabba dabba doo! <laughs> Yeah, the mountain said yabba dabba doo. <laughs> I made it to that gash in the mountain that I wanted to get to. It's not quite a gash like I thought it was. I thought it was more cave-like, but it's not. It is pretty interesting, in fact, however, because when it's really wet season, apparently, it's, uh, it becomes a waterfall. You can see it up there at the top, falling down and bringing down minerals that stain the side of that rock wall and it comes right down into a very significant wash right here. Lots of green life in there that enjoys the water that comes off of the top of that mountain. I mentioned it before, you can 
you can see the uh, caves there high up on the mountain. I, I do believe that those are mining openings where the miners back in the day set charges and blasted rock out of the side of this giant rock hoping to find gold inside. Very interesting one over here. A person could get up to it. That one looks like it goes in a ways. Be very interesting to explore. Ah, I was trying so hard to find some nice barrel cactus. <laughs> and there's one on this uh, sheer rock wall right here. Uh, uh, from here looking up, I'd say it's probably about five feet tall. Uh, you know, if you buy one of those in a nursery somewhere around here, that's going to be, I would guess, a couple hundred dollars anyway. You're looking out there in the desert. Here I am up close to the rock wall that I was trying to reach just right underneath a dry waterfall that I was sharing earlier. And uh, there's the desert out behind me. This is what that rock wall looks out at. And over there you can see the ridge that I was climbing earlier when I was up on top of it. It's about 100 feet tall. It's way over there now. So as you can see, I've walked quite a distance. <laughs> Here's a, a little peek at how challenging some of this hike has been. And not only has it been challenging because of the terrain, but in those bushes are some buzzing flying insects. <laughs> I didn't stick around long enough to find out if they were stinging. <laughs> I'm walking on the, it's kind of a secondary path, I guess going up into Palm Canyon, the main path that everybody walks. It's a path that I've been on a couple times now, once by myself and once with Brian and Ori. But I haven't been on this path before. I've seen some people walking it from across the way. You look uh, across the valley there, you see some people right in there walking on that path in the shade, in the shadows. So the reason that I'm over here walking the secondary path is this is where the people who claimed to see bighorn sheep claimed that they saw them. <laughs> I'm not so sure that they really saw sheep. I'm not so sure that they just didn't see some outcroppings of rocks or brush or something and and their imagination got the best of them, but I would sure love to be able to see some wild bighorn sheep and share them with you. But so far, no such blessing. We'll keep looking for a little more. And we gotta go back to the Millennium Falcon and get some lunch. Well done with that hike. That was about uh, three hours and about uh, four to five miles all around the face of the mountain and uh, up the uh, secondary trail up Palm Canyon. Had a great time. Saw some great things. Got some good exercise. Yabba-dabba-doo! See you next time! <laughs>